Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Volcano Sharks The Southwest Pacific Ocean is filled with underwater volcanoes, with Kavachi being one of the most active. The entire area surrounding the volcano is brimming with hot and acidic seawater, so dangerous that human divers don't dare go down there. And that's when the volcano isn't erupting. When it does erupt, the waters get even deadlier. Despite the volatility of the area, the Kavachi volcano is home to a group of sharks. A team of scientists with National Geographic recently sent robots down into the dangerous waters equipped with cameras, discovering not only a few animals surviving in the toxic environment, but a shocking amount of biodiversity. Researchers witnessed silky sharks, hammerhead sharks, and even Pacific sleeper sharks all living in the volcanic waters. The Pacific sleeper sharks were especially surprising to see because these sharks have only been caught on video twice before. The volcano itself is located near the Solomon Islands, and it is extremely active. Its last minor eruption was in 2014, and there were two explosive outbursts before that, one in 2007 and one in 2004. According to Brennan Phillips with the National Geographic team, nobody even knows how often the volcano really erupts because it's so difficult to study. Phillips also says it's shocking that so many sharks are living in the volcano, and it's made his team wonder just what kind of extreme environments the animals have adapted to over millions of years. Number 9. Flamingos of the Altiplano The Bolivian Altiplano is like a landscape from another planet. It's a desert plain high up in the mountains of the Andes. Complete with smoldering volcanoes, crumbling rock formations, pits of boiling mud, and the occasional snowstorm. The peaks of the Andes Mountains loom in the background, while sandwiched between two imposing volcanoes is a lagoon the color of spilled blood. It's truly a remarkable place, almost like a lake of liquid fire, thousands of feet above the ground with smoking volcanoes surrounding its shores. But what makes it really amazing is that it is home to hundreds upon hundreds of beautiful pink flamingos. The lagoon is called the Colored Lagoon or the Laguna Colorada and it has an extraordinarily high salt content. It's sprinkled with white islands of borax, alkaline salt deposits, and the water is only about three feet deep. The lagoon has also been a staple in Bolivian folklore for centuries. The ancient people of the Andes, before the Europeans arrived, believed the lagoon held the blood of the gods. In contrast, modern scientists believe the red color comes from algae and minerals in the water. But whatever makes the water red, it is still home to some seriously brave flamingos. The flamingos are drawn to the Blood Lagoon because it offers a nearly limitless supply of plankton. Three out of six known flamingo species live here. The Chilean flamingo, the Andean flamingo, and the James flamingo. The James flamingo is so rare that it was declared extinct for a brief time before a small population was found near the Red Salt Lagoon in 1956. If you've ever wondered why flamingos are pink, it's because of the red algae and plankton in these types of salt lakes where they mostly feed. It stains their feathers and turns them a reddish pink color, when in reality flamingos are born a dull gray. Number 8. Lava Lizards Lava lizards are a fascinating species of reptile that live across the Galapagos archipelago. There are seven different species of lava lizard in the Galapagos Islands that all belong to the genus Microlophus, with 15 other species found throughout the Pacific coast of South America. They kind of look like iguanas and can be found in large groups. They spend most of their time sunbathing on the top of lava, and that's where the lava lizards get their name. Of course, the lava lizards aren't actually lying on hot lava, but on the rough surface of the islands. For those who don't know, the Galapagos Islands are technically volcanoes. They were formed from fire and lava, molten basalt lava to be specific. They are a group of shield volcanoes and lava plateaus, and lava frequently oozes out of the volcanoes in slow, almost hypnotic flows. Once the lava dries, the lava lizards come to bask in the warmth. These lizards are the most abundant reptile found in the Galapagos. Scientists believe they evolved from a single ancestor millions of years ago, just like Darwin's famous finches, and then each developed unique traits based on which island they live on. Number 7. 
The Quito Rocket Frog The Quito Rocket Frog is native to the country of Ecuador, and like many of the most spectacular animals of South America, it's at a high risk for extinction. To make matters worse, the Quito Rocket Frog lives near the cone of a volcano that is ready to erupt at any moment. Scientists say that if the volcano erupts, it will most likely incinerate the last remaining frogs of the species. It wasn't always this way. The frogs used to live all over the Andes Mountains in Ecuador, but now they have been reduced to the small environment on the banks of the Pita River, right in the path of a potential lava flow if the nearby Cotopachi volcano erupts. After 73 years of deep slumber, the volcano started erupting in 2015. If its lava oozes out toward the river, the Quito rocket frogs will be boiled and gone. But there are some people trying to save the frog. Dr. Santiago Ron from Ecuador's Museum of Zoology says he and his team are currently sitting at a yellow alert, meaning the superficial activity of the volcano is low. Still, scientists have already collected 45 tadpoles and put them in a conservation facility. They will be kept here in case of an eruption, and that way, they won't be lost forever. Number 6. Volcano Snail The volcano snail is without a doubt the toughest gastropod in the entire world. The snail even looks like it belongs in a volcano. It has a black shell that looks more like a suit of iron armor, and it thrives inside the deadly environment of hydrothermal vents within the Indian Ocean. The volcano snail lives in the deepest parts of the hottest underwater volcanic vents found in the deep blue. Its shell is made of pure iron sulfide, which protects it from the extraordinary heat in which it thrives. For the first time in history, scientists recently sequenced the gastropod's full genome. This has been a scientific breakthrough from beginning to end. The snail was first discovered in 2001, living in the deep hydrothermal vent fields along the central Indian ridge at a depth of around 1.5 miles. It was officially given a genus and a species over a decade later in 2015. Then, in 2020, scientists deciphered the genome to make sense of how the snail survives such a harsh environment where the temperature reaches upwards of 750 degrees Fahrenheit. What the scientists found is that the snail has one very important gene called MTP-9. This gene makes it so that when the iron ions in the hot environment react with the sulfur growing naturally in the snail's scales, it creates the suit of armor that stops it from being boiled alive. Number 5. Combative Crabs Scientists on the research vessel Thompson were studying an undersea volcano called the Axial Seamount. It's positively huge and the most active submarine volcano in the Northeast Pacific Ocean. It's located about 300 miles from Cannon Beach in Oregon and sits at a depth of 4,626 feet. The last time it was active was in April of 2015. Having an active volcano so close to the shore of the United States is a pretty scary thing. And so, scientists are trying hard to figure out its secrets to see if they can predict when it will explode next. But their research was recently hampered by a blanket of crabs living on the volcano that refused to let the scientists do their job. These are spider crabs, and they live all over the volcano. According to Bill Chadwick, a volcanologist at Oregon State University, the researchers are always ready to be sabotaged by the crabs. Every time the scientists tried to put down one of their pieces of equipment, like a seismometer that would help study the movement and inner workings of the volcano, crabs would scuttle over it. There are millions of crabs down here living on the volcano, and they always make scientific expeditions a nightmare. As soon as something is put down, they use it as a perch. And while the team did manage to get their stuff down there, it's a gamble to see if it even works properly because there is so much crab interference. Number 4. Giant Woolly Rat Christopher Helgen is the curator of mammals at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. He is a biologist who recently teamed up with the Natural History Unit of the BBC to go on an expedition to a remote rainforest in Papua New Guinea. The place of interest was an extinct volcano called Mount Bosavi, located deep in the southern highlands. 
The crater of this gigantic volcano is over two and a half miles wide, with its walls sloping up at least half a mile. Because the volcano is extinct and long since dormant, nature has taken hold inside the crater. And thanks to the crater's high walls, the life inside of it has been sheltered from the rest of the world. It's more of a cave than a crater, with the animals living inside totally isolated from the forest on the other side of the wall. Inside the crater of the volcano, Christopher and his team discovered a new species of rat. It turned out to be one of the biggest rats in the world, and only found living in this environment inside the volcano. It's a beast of a rodent, weighing up to three and a half pounds and measuring nearly three feet long from the tip of its nose to the point of its tail. It's called the Bosavi woolly rat, and it lives on a diet of leaves and roots, building its dens in underground burrows within the crater. Number 3. The Maleo The island of Sulawesi in Indonesia is one of the most biologically diverse places in the world, home to some of the most unique ecosystems that haven't yet been eviscerated by humans. The island is located just east of the more popular Borneo, and scientists love it here for the strange and wonderful animals. There are dwarf buffalo, all kinds of bizarre primates, and tusked pigs. Sulawesi was even home to a race of primitive hominins called Homo floresiensis. They lived until as recently as 15,000 years ago by some estimates and grew to only be three feet tall. Scientists have compared them to real-life hobbits. But I'm here to talk about the Maleo, which is a bird. The island is home to 400 species of bird which are not found anywhere else on the planet. One of them is the Maleo, and it kind of looks like a really big chicken. These birds stand over two feet tall, have rosy red chest feathers, and have weird crests on their heads that look like helmets. They also live around volcanoes and lay their eggs in extremely warm volcanic soil to keep them hot and help them hatch faster. The nickname for the Maleo is the volcanic bird, and for good reason. These spectacular birds have evolved in one of the most volcanic regions on the planet. Indonesia is right in the middle of the Ring of Fire, a truly terrifying place. The volcanoes erupt frequently, and the wildlife has evolved to deal with it. The Maleo uses the volcanic activity to its benefit, laying its eggs in the hot soil. Nobody knows if it's because of the volcanic soil or just a special trait of the bird, but when the chicks hatch from their eggs, they can fly immediately. It's one of the only birds in the world that can do that. Number 2. Galapagos Volcano Snakes Finding snakes in the Galapagos Islands is not nearly as easy as finding lizards there. Sure, the archipelago is home to all kinds of reptiles like geckos and giant tortoises, but the snakes living here are extremely reclusive and very rarely seen. Charles Darwin collected the first Galapagos snake specimen in 1835, and almost nothing has been done to study them since. In 2015, Dr. Ortiz Catedral and her colleagues at the Galapagos National Park Directorate started studying the snakes, but they had a really hard time finding any. They went all across different islands, visited plenty of locations, including the tops of active volcanoes. They ended up finding roughly 400 specimens of snake over the course of several years. They also made a rather unusual discovery. The doctor and her team found that the Galapagos racer snake is a part-time cannibal. They found multiple instances of these Galapagos snakes eating each other when they got too hungry or too stressed out. Not only do the racer snakes slither around the tops of volcanoes, but they also seem to be stressed out about it, and so they eat their friends to calm down. Number 1. The Happy Face Spider The Happy Face Spider is an interesting arachnid that lives on the Hawaiian Islands. It's called the happy face spider because the pattern on its abdomen looks exactly like a smiley face. Two black dots for eyes and a small black U for the mouth. When looking at the spider, it's almost like it's smiling back at you. It's also quite a unique creature because its color changes with its diet. Its color can be completely different depending on what food it just ate because whatever it's metabolizing affects its skin. This is a totally bizarre evolutionary mechanism that's not seen in almost any other animals. The happy face spider doesn't live inside of any rumbling active volcanoes, not exactly near any lava, but they are one of the more interesting residents of Hawaii's Big Island, 
residing inside the volcanic island's rainforest. The spider can be found on the undersides of leaves and has adapted to life on an ever-growing island made of pure hardened lava quite well. Thanks for watching! Which of these volcano animals do you think is the coolest? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!